Uh, good morning. Yeah, close this door. It got cold last night in the 60s. We've been having a lot of heat uh, and humidity, but finally cooled down. So that's nice. Um, yeah, there's always some last minute stuff we have to bring into the trailer. Uh, you know, vitamins, pills, Claritin, you know, toothbrush, stuff like that. But uh, we're going to go up all the way to Maine today, uh, up to Andover, Maine, for a campground that's been here, you know, maybe last two, three years. It's finally come into uh, existence. Uh, they built it maybe three or four years ago. And uh, we're going to take check that out. We're going to check out Andover, Bethel, and who knows what else we'll do. So I'm inviting you to come and join us. top of the slide because the leaves have already started to fall. I don't want them up there when we close it. And they're off. <laughs> oh, 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 there. <laughs> okay, first things first. Gotta check the signpost. Our route today will take us out of Keene on Route 9, up to Concord and I-93 North, then Route 2 East after we pass through Francona Notch, through Gorham to Bethel in Maine, and then Route 5 North to Andover. The halfway point is at Lincoln and Woodstock. Okay, we had to stop for lunch in Lincoln, New Hampshire. This is actually pretty cool, being able to stop and just eat lunch in the trailer. It is. Not have to do a fast McDonald's food. or fast food, yeah. Something healthier. I just want to go outside and sniff things. Don't you? Yes. Okay, we are all filled, gasoline filled, stomachs filled. Yes. Bladders emptied. <laughs> yes. Okay. Time to go. It is. We're going to head on up through Franconia Notch and then through, I think it's Berlin and Gorham and then Bethel, and then on up to Andover, Maine. Very good. Last thing I want to do is get caught on the tracks with this fella, Hobo Railroad, going by. Scary. 
Here's the turnoff for the Flume Gorge. I'll put a link in the upper corner for that video. The cliffs of Franconia Notch are always a delight to see. Here's our turn off to go east towards Twin Mountain, Jefferson, Gorham, and eventually Bethel. Ooh, looks like a marathon running today. This is some steep terrain for people to run through. On the right there is Mount Washington, the highest peak, and on the left, Mount Jefferson. I guess that's why it's called Twin Mountains. And of course, someday we'll have to take the Cog Railway to the top of Mount Washington. Watch out for moose, it could save your life, hundreds of accidents a year, but I've yet to see one. Here's the Twin Mountain KLA. I'll put a link to our campground review of that. It was a very nice campground. Hmm, that mountain and road almost looks like our logo. What do you think? Passing through the town of Gorham, New Hampshire. This is a cute little town. We'll have to come back and look at this again sometime. Oh look, a barbecue place. We we'll definitely have to come back. This is Route 16. Turn right here and it will take you to North Conway. I like this guy's choice of RV. Why are there so many RVs going the other direction? You don't suppose it's because of the hurricane? Ah, there's Timberline Campground. That's definitely on our to-do list. Maybe next year. Airstream. Well, it's been four hours and now we're crossing the border into Maine. I think we're going to take a stop at the Information Center. Okay, we finally made it to Maine. Had to make it just a little stop here at the information center and take a picture of this bizarrely painted house or store or restaurant, whatever it is. Okay, we should be arriving before too long. Okay. Another seven or eight miles. It looks like they're constructing the road up here. Yeah. So it could take 
45 minutes could take a half hour. Well, let's hope not, because <laughs> yeah. it's been a ways now. Let's see, we started at 10, and it's now 3 o'clock. Yeah, with a couple of stops. Yeah, with a with lunch stop and a couple of breaks, yeah. Lots of road construction along here. Here we are arriving at Lone Mountain Riverside Campground, Andover, Maine. After a quick check-in at the camp store, they showed us that our campsite was one level down. We'll have a beautiful view. A different type of a back end. So, come this way. Towards me. Come to me. Me, I can't hear you. I don't know what this means. <laughs> what? I understand that that means stop. So <laughs> the rest of the, the waving, I'm not sure what she means by that. Right, because it's buggy. Yeah. Oh, it's she's just waving off the bugs. I thought she was giving me directions. No. <laughs> what a beautiful view this is here, huh? Yes. What do you like? Very, very nice. All these mountains. Yep. That's going to be spectacular in the fall. Yes, it is. Yeah. Lots of color. Another, another month from now? Wow. For now, we're going to check the power box here to see what the quality of the power is. Yep, we got good power. Okay, turn that off again. Connect the trailer. I just swallowed a mosquito and power back on. Okay, you should have power. Yes. Ta da! Now we hook up the water. Yep. After, after she puts out the slide. I don't want to get in the way of that. Open this. I had a bad connection and it started spraying out of the joint. Turned the water off, refastened it, probably a dry gasket or something. It's working now, but it sprayed water all over the electrical box here. Question, what's wrong with this picture? Yeah, there's no lock. I left the lock sitting on the back of the truck. Yeah, not a great thing to do. It could drive off and it would fall off the truck and then you wouldn't have a lock. Not the best place to put it, I guess. I normally, I normally just set the lock right there. I don't know why you didn't this time. Is the trailer uh, stable enough for you now? 
I think so, but let's give it a little bit to settle and we'll see. Yeah, yeah, you shake it quite well. Hear everything on the wall is shaking. Oh. So don't do that. Please. Okay. <laughs> The dogs are waiting so very patiently for us to get the trailer ready, as they always do. They know the routine, and they know that sooner or later, their W-A-L-K is coming. That's what you live for, isn't it? Your W-A-L-K. Had another little mishap here. I uh, had to untangle the cables. I sat down to do it, and when I stood up, of course, Leia was hovering about me. When I stood up, she had wrapped her leash all the way around my legs and so uh, you know how you like have the practical joke where somebody like ties your shoelaces together well basically that's what she did she tied my ankles together and when i went to go there was no place for me to go except right down stop tangling people up funny thing was is that as soon as i went down she was like right on top of me are you okay are you okay are you okay are you okay you know licking me and pawing me and making sure i was fine so very sweet dog Yes. Wouldn't you agree? Very yes, sweet she dog. Is. We're very lucky to have both of them. Even though they wrap us up and trip us. Doesn't happen <laughs> often now. Come on. At least I didn't break my arm. <laughs> right. Girls ready to eat hamburgers? I know this girl's ready to eat her hamburgers and her corn. Yes. What is the perfect camping hamburger? Well, you start with mustard. Then next we do ketchup. I'm going to do some ketchup on there. Medium meat, slice of tomato, slice of onion, yep, and, oh, I grabbed the wrong pickles. There we go, hamburger dills. Hamburger dills. Two should be sufficient. Of course, we have the cheese slice underneath everything. Flip that over. And the toasted bun, of course, I a little over toasted it there. And some corn saturated with butter. Here we go. Mmm. Oh yeah, that's good. Miss that meat, a little vegetable. Perfect camping burger. Please, sir, may I have some more? Well, this has been a beautiful sunset. I don't know if you saw it behind you at all, but really pretty. I saw it while we were eating. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, you were, fa that's right, you were facing it. Yeah. Uh, I was looking away. Yeah. Yep. It's been a nice evening. Yes. It's getting a little chilly out. I put my flannel jacket on. And, uh, having a hard time keeping the fire going. But it's generating a little heat. Of course, she's eating ice cream, so. <laughs> I may have some hot chocolate later. Anyway, so yeah, we're gonna retire soon and uh, we'll see you in the morning. Enjoy the time lapse. Next morning, we're uh, going for a little drive in Andover, Maine. Show a little bit of the town square here. Are you ready? Here it is. This is 
very rural New England. Quiet little town. There's a warning for commercial trucks. It's a winter warning. 13% mountain grades ahead. Use chains. Don't use the GPS. Turn back and use State Route 5. Main Street and Newton Street. It's the crossroads. Now, I wonder if I had brought my guitar down here and started tuning it, what would happen? That's the town hall across the street. Lone Mountain Grange, number 131. First Congregational Church of Andover. Beautiful little country gazebo here. And they have some memorials here, starting with the Civil War. Now they do have a uh, historical site here that is worth noting. Like it says right here, milestone in electrical engineering and computing. On 11th of July, 1962, this site transmitted the first transatlantic television signal to a twin station in France via the Telestar satellite. The success of Telestar and the Earth stations, the first built for active satellite communications, illustrated the potential of a future worldwide satellite system to prove communications between continents. Who would have thought that, that little old Andover had a historic significance in broadcast TV? From here, the first satellite signal bounced off of Telestar all the way to France. Hey. Yes. I got a question for you. Okay. Do you remember Telestar? Boy, that would have been back a ways. Yeah. Do you realize that Andover was the first time they bounced a television signal from here onto Telestar and over to France? Really? It was the first site where they did an international television broadcast. Wow. Who would have thought? Yeah, in little tiny Andover. Yeah, it's kind of amazing the treasures that you find just by chance when you wander through these towns. Yeah, little oh. little known facts from small towns. Yep. Okay, so we're in downtown Bethel. A little windy. Hurricane Lee is knocking at the door. This is known as the 1896 Fire Bell, rededicated by the Bethel Fire Department in the Bicentennial. This was known as the O'Neill Robinson House in 1821. Today it's the Museum of Bethel Historical Society. the Veterans Memorial Park. And they have a memorial here in grateful recognition to all our men and women who have honorably served our country in times of war and peace, duty, honor, and country. This is the Mineral Museum. That's a pillow basalt, that's a type of lava. It's like when you see it squeezing out in Hawaii or in yep. Iceland. Yeah. This is a regular basalt. It's kind of in that hexagonal shape. There's a jasper. Notice that's red. Bet you didn't think of jasper as being red. I did not. I always thought it had a green hue to it. Yeah, that's that's emerald. Right. Emerald, like the Emerald <clears throat> City. Yes. Jasper is red. This piece of rock right here is called yeah. vein quartz. You know why? Why? Because it's so vain. Oh, no. <laughs> I bet you they thought its song was about it. That's right. <laughs> Handcrafted in New Hampshire. They do have maple syrup here. Makes it a legitimate New English 
gift shop. Oh, these are really interesting. Look at this. Bottle stoppers. Check out these bottle openers. It's pretty cool. Spatula's made out of wood. And it's blue. It is. Collection of cutting boards over here. I like these canisters up here with the pine cones on them. Very pretty. Oh, they have uh, plates and mixing bowls to match them down here. Yeah, look at that. Do you need any cookie cutters? They even have a lobster cookie cutter, but you can with love out. Not so much. It's like stepping back in time. Yeah. Well, I think that's going to do it for looking around Bethel. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of a quiet day. I think they were supposed to have a kind of a festival today, but I think it probably got postponed because of Hurricane Lee coming this way. Yeah. It's been a little breezy, but not too bad. No, and we're not getting much rain. So yeah, no, no, hardly really any hard. rain at all. Really nice. Yeah. So we're going to head back towards the campground. Maybe check out a covered bridge or two. Sharon wanted to stop and take a look at this covered bridge. It's an old one. It is. Yeah. It's not even traffic can go on it. Yeah, no. It's pedestrians only. Oh, you know, nature trail along the side here too. Oh, slatted floors. <laughs> wood. The entire thing is wood. Yes. I mean, it's, it's amazing the craftsmanship that yes. they would do to make these things. Absolutely. Many, many years ago. Centuries, right. centuries ago. Yeah. You see the remnants of the road going into the bridge. The old road. Got a new one over there now. Ah, oh, lovely quiet afternoon with gunfire. Lovejoy Covered Bridge, Andover, Maine, erected in 1867. Oh, this one looks pretty rickety to me. <laughs> wow. At least they have these, these guards here so you don't pull something yeah. through bigger than what it should be. That's a slow, lazy river. Hey, so we got back to the campground and we're having their, you know, uh, benefit dinner and everything. Yeah, smells really good, but uh, we planned on pasta tonight. So I think we're going to do some Alfredo in the, in the trailer. Okay, what do we got going on here? Oh, we got a dog. Look at that. Hey there. So I bet you it's a little dark in here. We have no power. I know we have no power. There's no power in the campground at all. Okay, so we're rapidly trying to figure out what we're going to do for dinner. I mentioned we were going to do pasta, but we're going to do like chicken Alfredo, but the chicken's in the refrigerator and the chicken's frozen. And she can't thaw it because we don't have a microwave. Beautiful, beautiful clear sky, beautiful day. Still a little wind out, but hey, it's nice. Yeah, nice and beautiful today. Sun's up, I'm gonna put some miles on, head back to Keene, and uh, yeah, that'll be it for the vlog. I wanna thank you so much for joining us. We really, really do appreciate you. and Thank you so much for inviting us into your homes on these nights. So with that being said, we're going to be off and we thank you for watching and until next time we will see you on the streets.